name's Malcolm Lang. I'm the anaesthetic coordinator at Wirral Hospital Trust. I've worked for the Trust for 35 years uh, and worked in theatre ever since I finished my nurse training. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Olsen. I've been a consultant anaesthetist for 19 years at Wirral University Hospital Trust. Originally, I thought I would follow a surgical career, but it intrigued me that patients could have the same operation, but depending on the type of anaesthesia administered, the outcomes would be entirely different. I like anaesthetics, it's, uh, it's quite technical. I also like the interaction with the patient because patients come to theatre really scared, really nervous, and I have five minutes to reassure the patient, gain their trust, make them realise that I'm as professional as I can be and they're in safe hands. It's a really nice place to work. We're a good team and it, and it works really well, I think. So anaesthesia is the deliberate loss of sensation and there are three main types that, that commonly used um, as a local infiltration so you put local anaesthetic injected around a wound for cleaning or a suturing. It's a regional anaesthesia so for example a spinal or a peripheral nerve block which blocks a whole limb or a, from the waist downwards or something like that and general anaesthesia where you get complete loss of all sensation including sensory sensation. Anaesthesia it starts with preoperative assessment a number of things are actually evaluated then we go on to the actual induction and operation itself. General anaesthesia is induced in the UK mainly by uh, the intravenous route. The advantage of using total intravenous anaesthesia is that the patient actually has a quicker recovery time compared to more conventional types of anaesthesia. More often than not we'll use a small cannula, so a, small, a very small needle into a vein in the back of the hand. When I'm in theatre we're obviously monitoring the patient very closely and we have to vary the depth of anaesthesia so it's a constantly uh, dynamically changing situation and you've got to respond to any physiological changes. The level of consciousness is, is very finely adjusted and, and constantly monitored and it can be adjusted breath by breath. Primarily we're looking at heart rate, uh, blood pressure, oxygen levels uh, in the blood from, that's from the patient side of things, but also closely monitoring what we are doing to the patient. So preoxygenation is a technique whereby we would get a patient to breathe 100% oxygen for three minutes prior to the induction of anaesthesia. And the reason for that is that air only contains 21% oxygen, so the rest of your lung is filled with nitrogen and other gases. We would endeavour to replace that nitrogen with oxygen so your lungs are filled with 100% oxygen. One of the great changes of, in anaesthetics from my point of view in my 35 year career is the introduction of laryngeal masks. At Clatterbridge we use Laracil Blue laryngeal masks. It's much more convenient. Obviously ease of insertion is very important for a laryngeal mask but the Laracil Blue is easy to actually use. When you're, you're inserting a laryngeal mask it's important that you've actually got the patient deep enough to actually seat the laryngeal mask. Your assistant will then do a jaw thrust and open the mouth and then with my right hand I would insert the laryngeal mask. I let my assistant inflate the cuff, it will pop up slightly and then you can attach your breathing circuit and either ventilate the patient if they're apneic or let them breathe spontaneously. They're very soft and conforming so that was one of the major deciding factors when we chose to use the laryngeal blue. But more of more importance the actual cuff um, material is soft and deformable and actually causes less trauma than other than dual masks that are actually on the market. The purpose of a laryngoscope is to uh, visualise the larynx in order to pass an intracranial tube. This is achieved by inserting the laryngoscope in the right side of the mouth, deflecting the tongue to the left. We then lift in the direction of the handle of the laryngoscope that will elevate the epiglottis and hopefully give us a, um, a, a good view of the larynx. Uh, at this trust we've uh, recently moved over to a fully disposable laryngoscope. The, the difficulty in um, decontaminating reusable blades is a bit of a logistic nightmare. So it's much safer for us and now more convenient and now more cost effective for us to be disposable. In this trust we actually use a, a circle system which is a, an efficient circuit both for spontaneously breathing and ventilating patients. A coaxial system is efficient to ventilate patients with but is very inefficient 
for spontaneously breathing. The benefits of using a circle system are beneficial both for the hospital and a patient. Uh, a Mapleton A and McGill circuit is very efficient, um, but the components are quite wide apart. The expiratory valve is at the patient end, but the rebreathing bag is at the other end of the circuit. So for you to ventilate a patient, you're in this position, so your valve's here and you're squeezing the bag here. When we're recovering or transferring from theatre off the circle circuit and going to recovery, we want everything to be near to the patient so we can keep an eye on the patient without having to reach for a valve that's somewhere else. So we, we use Mapleton C. For example, if you were looking after a critically ill patient and you need to be focused on the patient right in front of you, you want a circuit that delivers oxygen as close to the patient as possible with your valve and your rebreathing bag that you can ventilate the patient with all next to you. Um, circle circuits have a, uh, an APL valve built into them, but they're away from the patient because once the patient's settled on a circle circuit with a low flow, we want to be able to control the APL valve. It doesn't need to be next to the patient. It can be next to the anaesthetist chair. It's crucial that you use the correct fresh gas flow for different types of circuits. For example, the water circuit, Mapleton C circuit, is really good because all the oxygen supply is right at the patient, the valve is next to the patient, the bag's next to the patient, but they're really inefficient unless you've got a huge fresh gas supply. Otherwise, they'll breathe the gas out into the bag and then breathe it back in again, and it's got lots of carbon dioxide in it. In simplistic terms, they're breathing back in some of the expired CO2. Scavenging is um, the gas that's delivered to the patient, obviously is expired by the patient, exhaled by the patient, and we don't want it to pollute the atmosphere because it's a toxic agent. Everybody would be asleep otherwise. The waste gas, the excess gas, is drawn off and vented to atmosphere. And some of the gases, for example, carbon dioxide, in a circle system would go through soda lime crystals which would absorb the carbon dioxide so we can reuse the rest of the gas, but the carbon dioxide, which is toxic, would be taken out of the circuit. Tidal volume is a measurement of gas, um, much like a wave. Gas is delivered to the patient, the patient would breathe in inspiration and expiration, and the gas in the circuit would move. We calculate this at approximately 10 mils per kilo uh, at the resting state. The minute volume is essentially just the, the volume of gas that's consumed per minute. Functional residual capacity is the volume left in the lungs at the end of a normal expiration. Anatomical dead space is the volume from the nasal cavity down to the bronchioles that does not take part in the gas exchange. Physiological dead space is ventilated alveoli that do not take part in gas exchange because they're actually too far away from blood vessels. At this trust we routinely use an HME filter on uh, every patient, primarily for the patient's benefit, not only from protection from any contamination, but also there's active humidification of the gases. We also use a filter to protect the breathing circuits that we use because we use these for 10 operating sessions or seven days, whichever is the soonest. Flexicare have been our supplier for seven years plus. Um, we buy nearly all of our consumables from Plexicare. We've never had a problem. What's important as the anaesthetic coordinator at Clatterbridge is the quality of the, of the kit that we get and Flexicare have always delivered that. The important thing when dealing with a company is that they listen to our feedback and actually respond to our needs, which is certainly important. <laughs>